Hey everybody, welcome back to the Woody Hayes Athletic Center for oh, the first, first time in a while. This is the podcast. It's a Snap Judgments recruiting edition with Jeremy Birmingham. I am Austin Ward. Why are we having this berm? Well, <clears throat> things aren't going great on the <laughs> recruiting trail right now for Ohio State. The month of July was a rough one, as it seems my voice also mm. uh, has been out of the loop for Have you a just while? been yelling about yeah. what's been going yeah, on? Yeah, maybe. My voice has been out of the loop for a while. Now you can start to see that uh, maybe it's trying to take another extended vacation as well. This is Dewan Jones. Oh, wow. He's a lot bigger than we are. <laughs> hey, Dewan, we heard you just lost a bunch of weight. That's how, what we're... Yeah, I would say so. How much? Uh, down like 10. Down 10. You're still a big guy. <laughs> we'll see you next Thursday. The The situation is simple. Um, Ohio State hasn't done what people thought. I mean, the Buckeyes had a huge recruiting weekend, the third and final weekend of, of June, uh, or the fourth weekend, I guess, June 24th. And you had a lot of really important recruits visiting that weekend. Guys like Justice Haynes, the running back, guys like Caleb Downs, guys like John Walker. A lot of these guys that people had sort of penciled in as potential um, additions to the class of 2023 for Ohio State. And they're all, you know, Georgia, Georgia commit. Um, or Georgia prospect like Justice Haynes commits to Alabama. Caleb Downs, number one safety in the country, commits to Alabama. The likelihood is that today, Thursday, John Walker commits to Central Florida over Ohio State. Um, <clears throat> it's easy for people to see, like, oh, I understand the guy going to Alabama. Now, when you're a defensive tackle being recruited by Larry Johnson and you choose to play for Central Florida, uh, I think people get a little concerned. And that's, I think it's justifiable, right? I mean, the, the things are different right now than they've ever been in recruiting because of name, image, and likeness, because of the transfer portal, because of all these things that are going on. And, and I think there's a, a fair question to be asked of, are the Buckeyes, because they're being unwilling mm -hmm. to really wade deep into the inducements. inducement side of NIL, which in this case stands for now it's legal. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think there's some questions about should they just be doing this while everyone else is? Because right now there is no guardrail. And we heard Ryan Day talk about it at, at media days, and he was definitely like, they're not wanting to do that. And so they're going to have to find a balance. I really apologize for my voice. This literally just started, what, 20 minutes yeah, ago? Yeah, it did. Uh, it's hard to square some of this stuff, honestly, for me, Byrne, because the name, image, and likeness situation, I mean, you can look right over there to our left. CJ Stroud has returned yeah. from you know, a, a big appearance in Indianapolis where we were for Big Ten Media Days. He just, you know, had signed a bunch of cards. He had just signed, uh, you know, big deals with several different companies in Columbus. We know what car uh, he was able to pick up from a dealership over this the summer. Uh, yeah, it's it's quite nice. Yeah. And all that stuff when you are at Ohio State is big time. The amount of money that's coming in, there he goes. <laughs> um, it, it. CJ... Like, can you just... Here's what we're talking about, CJ. We're talking about NIL. You can. You don't have to be promised it as a recruit because once you're here and you earn it, it's a different situation. Yeah, if you play good, then I mean, you get paid. That's you right. I mean? That's kind of like what it's about. We don't... And it's not even about the amount. Like Everybody in Columbus, you know, the amount of businesses that would right. are around here, everyone's going to find and something. so many people willing to help. So, I mean... Have you had recruits, as they've made visits here, ask about how you guys get paid? Real quick, I don't need any details. <laughs> yeah, they have, but I mean, my thing, I tell them like, you play good football, and you get paid. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Like, uh, I don't, I don't really believe in going somewhere where, uh, I mean, I'm not talking bad about the other schools, but like, they, they might not be the greatest, or <laughs> they're they're on the way back up, or they're trying to get back up, and uh, they're paying all these kids a lot of money, but. It's a team sport. You got to have great players around you. So I have one other question. I'm gonna let you leave. Yeah. When He's you got a busy being, day. When you were being recruited. There were schools that offered you money up front, right? We don't have to say names. We know it. It happens out there. <laughs> it's not a he doesn't secret. Wanna, he doesn't want to answer this question. He knows it's not a secret. Why <laughs> did you decide to come to a school that you knew you had to earn it at? I mean, because, I mean, that's the type of, one, it's the type of person I am. It's where my mom made and raised me. And just uh, I just think that, I mean, that's more natural. I don't need any money. I mean, I don't play this game for money. I know that it would have came. It's right. going to come if I play good enough. So yeah. that's kind of my mindset coming into college. All right. Appreciate you. Get out of here. Thank yeah. you. Get us some of those Onyx cards. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. It was hard. Huh? <laughs> that's it. Uh, yeah, they, they do look really good. Onyx cards, the Rose Bowl. It's got Jackson Smith and Jigman yeah, on there as well. Um, I don't know that he was actually going to even be in the, the camera shot here because we didn't frame this expecting him to be in the shot. But um, 
when I speak to well, you. So my point was that I was getting into sure. was like, it, it, we couldn't have timed that really any better, but the amount of money for the stars at Ohio State is always going to be the highest. And I can also sort of understand the inducement part where you're taking the guaranteed money up sure. front. And if it's large enough that you don't even ever have to make it to the NFL to live comfortably for a while, I, I certainly understand that. I don't begrudge anyone making their decisions that way. It's a twofold argument really that I think we're looking at, which is if you're talking about what happened on a Wednesday or a Thursday of this week for Ohio State, how much of it is just the overall uncertainty about the future of the defense because Jim Knowles hasn't put any product on the field. We know that at some point Larry Johnson is not going to be coaching at Ohio yeah. State into the future. So, you know, you have to put something, some sort of product that they can bite their teeth into and not just be buying something on potential promise because that's twofold. Ohio State isn't guaranteeing money up front most, in most cases, right, compared to some of the others. And if you're a defensive player, you're still also betting on the come, then you don't know for sure yet. Well, <clears throat> Wednesday at the media days, Ryan Day in, in his press conference at the table, the hour long session was asked about defensive recruiting. And he said, point blank, these recruits have no idea what this defense is. And you can tell it to them. You can show them Jim Knowles tape from Oklahoma State. You can tell them what Perry Aliano did at Cincinnati or what Tim Walton said. They don't know. And despite the fact that Alabama has coaching changes nearly every year, you know Nick Saban's running that defense. If Ryan Day changed over his offensive recruiting staff, it wouldn't matter nearly as much here because Ryan Day runs the offense and his reputation on that side is now solidified. Nick Saban can change coaches all day long. It doesn't matter. Nick Saban's there. Kirby Smart's in the same situation now at Georgia. The proof is in the pudding. And I, I tweeted this on Wednesday after Caleb Downs picked Alabama that until this defense is on the field in that building on September 3rd, recruits are going to have questions. Now, the response I got from a lot of people was, well, why is Miami doing so well? Why are these other schools recruiting defensive players better? If you're only recruiting players that care about NIL, which Ohio State is not, or let me, let me flip that. If you're recruiting players that only care about NIL, Ohio State's not recruiting those players. If NIL is the primary driver in a kid's decision, Ohio State's not recruiting those players. But Miami <clears throat> certainly is. Right now, Miami is recruiting those players, and they are doing well, and that's great. It's also a historic program, and, and new head coach, there's always energy. Mario Cristobal is a guy that understands Miami's culture and, and, and was there in their heyday. Ohio State's recruiting against Alabama, not against Miami. Alabama very similar to Ohio State, is not using the upfront inducement model that a lot of teams are. But they don't have to. They have a national championship every other year going back the last 15 years. They have the number one or number two ranked defense in the country nearly year in and year out. They have the greatest college football coach in the history of college football running their program. Their questions pale in comparison to Ohio State's. Ohio State's defense has been historically bad from an Ohio State perspective in three of the last four years. Yeah. You cannot deny that or ignore that. And at some point, in, in the last few years, they, they were able to sort of navigate that on the recruiting front because at least you had staff consistency. That you could say, hey, we're getting better. We're getting better. These guys are here. Now they've, COVID's gone. This is this and this and that. Now none of that's there. Now it's a whole new staff. And you can't just ignore that. But I think that to look at this as, does Ohio State have a recruiting problem as a whole? Well, clearly they do not because... What you just talked about with Kirby Smart and Nick Saban and obviously the ease with which they win battles for defensive players, ask them how easy it is to win for a five-star quarterback yeah. or the best wide receivers in the country right now uh, or whoever they want at running back. That situation, Ohio State has a dramatic advantage because of what Ryan Day has built on that side of the ball. That It's not an Ohio State NIL problem. It is not, uh, you know, comprehensive for the entire program it's to me and, and you will have a better perspective on this I look at it as it's isolated to the defense and that's been the case for several years which is why you know the top 10 number one ranked uh, offense and the numbers here nationally for the defense don't match because the amount of talent is not even on both sides of the ball Ohio State's aware of that yeah it's not like they aren't trying but you can't say on the one hand 
we're going to offer guarantees up front to get more defensive players and then ignore that you're signing the number one wide receiver in the country and give him nothing. Right. That's not a, you can't have a piecemeal approach. You also have to understand that in this recruiting class of 2023, they have four cornerbacks committed. They have three safeties committed. They have, um, uh, you know, an Ohio State legacy on the defensive line. Jason Moore, the recent addition out of Maryland, is a big time player. I mean, he is a top 60 player in the country. The Buckeyes have, according to all available metrics, a top two ranked recruiting class in the country right now. It's July. <laughs> Things are not going great. Uh, that is the sugar coated version. <laughs> but. This is also a class that is is going to get a major boost once the product hits the field. Or these recruits are going to be validated in their decision. Bottom line, this recruiting class isn't anywhere close to over, and it's one of the top two or three ranked classes in the country by every single recruiting network out there. So, And I don't know. I've never talked to Downs or any of these guys involved in their decisions in the summertime. You would have a much better read on, on that and their personality as well. But... I know enough other recruits that just because they committed uh, in June or July doesn't mean that they couldn't revisit that in November or December. And I'm not saying let's keep these exact same people in mind for Ohio State until then, but there are going to be other options that emerge and these players may still wind up being the same ones involved because here's the other secret about, and this is not related to downs, but if you take that money for name, image, likeness in the upfront, guess what? You still don't have to sign there. You yeah. don't have to do anything. Like they can't put them in a contract to go somewhere. That actually is against the the, right. the no rules. Right. And these NIL collectives that they sign with, the the weird little secret is that those collectives are bound to the players, not the school not the that, the, that the collective is representing. So it is a weird, uh, you know, back and forth that way that this stuff goes. But <clears throat> bottom line is for Ohio State. They're going to need to put a product on the field that draws recruits' attention on defense. The Buckeyes, outside of 2019, when you had Chase Young and Jeff Okuda and Sean Wade and Jordan Fuller and Jonathan Cooper and Baron Browning and all these guys that are in the NFL now, the last couple of years have been pretty rough. And if it wasn't so rough, they wouldn't have had to replace three quarters of the defensive staff. So <laughs> they understood heading into this summer that it was going to take a different approach. Now. Maybe they had a misstep by having all of the primary targets here on the June 24th weekend for a coaching staff that was relatively inexperienced in that sort of environment. When you have a guy like Jim Knowles who comes from Oklahoma State and Duke, when you have Perry Eliano who is at Cincinnati, um, when you have Tim Walton who's been in the NFL for 15 years, maybe those guys weren't ready to manage that sort of chaos that weekend. I mean, that's a fair, a fair argument, I think, that can be made that maybe – they didn't get the most out of that weekend from a attention standpoint to every recruit that's here. But well, they'd have to learn, right? right? Because Ryan Day's and Mark Pantone's philosophy is not going to be to do that during the season and have a huge, right. unless it's a big game, but you don't get the same amount of time. So you, right. you better start learning how to use June. Right. And that's what Mark Pantone and Ryan Day have done for the last couple of years. It's been the June time where they really want to cultivate those relationships. Perhaps that was a misstep this year because of the new coaches. I'm not gonna say yes or no, but clearly when you look at that big weekend, generally speaking, in the last few cycles, those primary huge weekends have turned out to be fairly successful. Who, what's next for them? I mean, do you just, is it what's just a, is that, to September 3rd? I mean, yeah, I mean, I think you do. And what, that's what's interesting. You see, if you look around the country this coming weekend, a number of the biggest schools in the country are having those, those cookouts, those big barbecue weekends that Ohio State did last year, and it was very successful, the Buckeye Barbecue and Bash. They're not doing that this year. Now again, but those have to be led player led, right? I mean, no, 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 no. They're allowed to have. Okay. They're allowed to. They have a, a live recruiting period okay. this week. I got you. Ohio State's had players in and out of this building from Monday through the week, and they're having individual stuff, but nothing big. And again, I know the naysayers like everyone else is doing it. Why would Ohio State not be doing it? And what you just alluded to is correct. Ohio State wants every top recruit in the country here four weeks from now, five weeks from now. Yeah. So. The idea is focus on preparation, focus on the team, and then have the recruiting. The weekend that would be this weekend needs to be September 3rd when Notre Dame is here. It's a night game. The Buckeyes will have everyone come in on Friday. Holiday weekend. Everyone will come in on Friday. <laughs> the game, they'll have all night Friday, all day Saturday to hang out before the game. And so that's really the goal. And it feels, again, <clears throat> perhaps it's a calculated risk, but they want that atmosphere in the horseshoe on September 3rd 
to be something special. And as fun as these barbecue weekends are when you're playing, you know, bags in the horseshoe, it's a little different in the horseshoe with 105,000 people. Bags? Yeah, I know. What's that called? Cornhole. Bags. Beans is what I call them. Beans, bags. Beans, bags. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bottom line, before my voice completely Yeah, this is, I'm gonna, I want to see how long you can actually keep that up. I, the, again, folks, I need you to understand, this started literally 10 minutes before we started recording this video. Maybe you shouldn't have had such spicy wings at Roosters. They were spicy, but Roosters always gets me with their spiciness. The nuclear wings are worth the pain, uh, folks. So just make sure if you go to Roosters, you get them. Um, we're going to talk a lot more recruiting on the podcast coming up. I'll have my own normal show talking stuff. Bermanology will, will, will be there. Austin's going to have his show. Uh, other hosts will have their shows. And we're really looking forward to just everything that <laughs> Who we can, might that be? We can bring, uh, I don't know. Nobody's walked into this shot. I think it's CJ. He's a, he's popped in as many times as that other guy. That's true. It could be CJ Stroud as the other host from now on. <laughs> we'll have to talk to these guys in the building. But bottom line, there's a lot of stuff coming at the podcast, and we're really excited to bring it to you. I apologize for what is happening in my throat right now, but that's life in 2022. Um, is there anything else pressing? We'll talk quarterback real quick. That's the one other position that I think a lot of people are questioning what Ohio State needs or should do, right? Oh, I was, I was going to say, what are they questioning? Well, 2023. Okay. Austin Novosad remains sort of the top guy. He's the Baylor commit out of Texas. Uh, Brock Glenn from, from Tennessee is committing this Saturday, and Ohio State's sort of making a push there, and, and it, it's indicative of, of their approach in this cycle, which is get one. Who it is? Yeah. I mean, it matters, of course. You always have a pecking list, but the reality is they need a quarterback in this class pretty bad. And even if they get one, even if they get Brock Glenn on Saturday, it doesn't preclude them from needing another one eight months from now, depending on how the quarterback battle shakes out. Because you know C.J. Stroud is gone after this year. Ryan Day understands the changing philosophy of recruiting the quarterback position, but they still want four. Yeah, I think if I had to draw it up in the way I look at the potential succession order here for what Ohio State already has committed and already in this building behind us, I've been in the in this camp and we were out here in June and we saw uh, those options you know throwing and uh, hey he, he looks good and he's got a great first name uh how, how do you say the last Austin Nova said right he's from Texas yeah you like quarterback I like Texas. a kid named Austin from Texas sounds great but my philosophy for this if I was drawing it up in Ryan Day Corey Dennis Kevin Wilson know way more uh than I would and and you'll defer to the, I'd defer to their judgment every time but I'm not sure why you would need to be involved with a high school recruit in this class. I think that the transfer portal with someone who is understanding you're most likely going to be arriving as a backup quarterback and security blanket down the road. I know Ryan, I've had this conversation with Ryan Day directly. He's not going to want to recruit or sign via the transfer portal someone who's okay being a backup. And I certainly understand wanting a high achiever and a competitive person. But to me, in this era of transfers and everything else that's going on with the constant churn with quarterbacks i think having somebody who understands what the possibility could be worth to them as a number two or number three and thinking i'm thinking about somebody like chris chugginoff that's that's a valuable addition to your team and that the transfer portal to me makes more sense when you you know you have to i would assume and maybe that's not a fair thing to do that devin brown recognizes that kyle mccord probably going to be uh you know if he does what he's supposed to, a one-year starting quarterback, and then out, then it's his turn. And then you have somebody else who's coming down the road, the top quarterback in a prospect in the country. So you know, to me, I think that you don't have to sign somebody for Ohio State. I certainly do understand what you're saying is that they still want to. If everything goes exactly as planned. Yeah, which it rarely does. Which it rarely does. Then you can get by in this cycle playing the transfer portal. Uh, the more likely scenario, based on what we've seen in the last five years of quarterback recruiting at Ohio State, is that they're going to need to, because something weird could happen. And we've I've written about this, I've talked about it. The 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 line, the lineage is simple here, right? You got C.J. Stroud for this year, you get Kyle McCord as the one year starter next year, you get Devin Brown as the one year starter the year after that, then you get Dylan Rayola for two years. If everything goes exactly as planned, but nothing rarely goes as planned. Yeah. And uh, you just got to be prepared if you're Ohio State. And they're really, the, the thought process is you got to get the first one before you can get the second one. The first one is going to be a class of 2023 high school prospect who they can develop to be the guy beyond Devin Brown. 
Right. You know, that that's the stuff to fill that spot. So whoever it is, I think there's a number of guys. Austin Novosad, we've talked about. Brock Glenn, I mentioned. Um, the sort of the dark horse for me is Iowa State commitment, J.J. Cole, who is was really impressive at the Elite 11 in April in Ohio, was dominant at the Elite 11 out in California. A guy that Ohio State's been keeping tabs on. Um, but at this point, because the way quarterback recruiting is, everyone's pretty much committed somewhere. So you just got to balance that out. What's up, Court? Good okay. to see you, man. There he is. Um, we're in the right spot and, today. Yeah. So that's really where we're at with quarterback recruiting. But you could get an answer for that on Saturday with Brock Glenn, and I guess we'll see exactly how that plays out. If Brock Glenn wants the spot, he can take it. The Buckeyes are not going to hold anyone off for anyone else at this point. Basically, you're suggesting that all three of those guys are evaluated at roughly the same skill level by Ohio State and that the first one to grab the straw gets yeah, gets I mean, the and I, this is what I wrote back in, in May. Like, it's a lottery ticket for, for that class of 2023 quarterback. Whoever takes that spot, it is a lottery ticket because you know you've seen the way this works. Come in here, you redshirt, you play a little bit in your second year, you are one-year starter, and you can be off to the NFL as a, as a first-round pick. It's pretty enticing. So the question is, who wants it? How does the NIL era change that? How does the free transfer era change that? Mm -hmm. um, but the plan from the Ohio State perspective hasn't changed. And that's, we're going to develop you as a quarterback better than anyone else. And someone is going to say yes to that. And then whoever that guy is, is going to be pretty good. He's going to be a top 20 quarterback in the country. And heading into this cycle, if Ohio State, if, if I told you Ohio State was going to get a top 15, top 20 quarterback in the country, you'd be like, sweet, that's all they need. And now that's where they're at. They do need one. The, that class with those four wide receivers committed, for the top 15 receivers in the country, um, they're going to – some quarterback, two tight ends who are top 10 tight ends, yeah. four wide receivers, top 15 wide receivers. There's a quarterback out there that's going to find himself <laughs> in a pretty darn good situation. So we'll, we'll see who that's going to be. We're going to find ourselves in a better situation uh, out of the sun. Back at, the, back at Roosters. You know, back at Roosters, back on the podcast. He's Austin Ward. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. That was Dewan Jones and C.J. Stroud and Court, Court Williams. Williams. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Really, thank you for listening because I sound like this. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>